So, <clears throat> I, um, you know, I, if I didn't know what I know today, it would have been a lot harder. But I do know, and it doesn't hurt half as much. That's probably why I'm able to um, overcome this, because I understand where everybody's coming from now. Everybody has been programmed to believe something, and they can't comprehend something completely different. If my father doesn't see anything good about me, I mean, who's going to teach him? He doesn't have the comprehension. You know, it is very much like reading a book. You are able to read the lines, but do you really understand what you're reading? So it's like, yeah, he can see that I'm a human being and his daughter, and he loves me. But is he actually seeing who I am? Does he understand the story of who I am? No. Um, and this is going on on a global basis, that we don't have the comprehension needed to get along. It's like you be, you know, if you're going through a depression, get out of your depression now. Come on, snap out of it. You know, if everybody, if, if one of the biggest selling drugs is antidepressants and a lot of people are on drugs and you can say, oh, they just have to stop. Just snap your fingers. It's over. You know, you, you just have to work a, a program. It doesn't work. And it won't work because if you choose to get yourself on, you know, in line with yourself, you have to go out into society that's doing something wrong. In one way or another, you do have to accept some of the wrong things that are going on. And as long as you're accepting some of the things that are wrong that are going on, then you're never working towards changing it. You're, it's just something you walk away, you'll never ever look at to the point where globally everything's falling apart because we never wanted to look at all of these little things that start within our families of how we look at each other. Because not only are how we looking at each other from a really, really warped perspective, um, we're causing an enormous amount of pain on each other. We're stronger when we're together, not apart. And there are some global changes that need to happen. And medically, I mean, for in my my parents world I feel really really sad that my father is suffering so I opened up the conversation and um, the words came perfectly I guess this is the best way I can describe love and this is this is the good news for me at least because I found the words I hope it might ring too for a few other people but um, he said he loves me so I was, I said, look at, if you love a car, then you're proud of it. You want to show that car off. You can't wait to be around that car because you love that car. And then I, I said, did you love me the same way you would love that car? That, did you see everything good in me? Were you bragging about me? Were you anxious to be around me all the time? You know, like, were you enjoying the conversations? You know, no, never once in my life did that ever happen. So in my perspective, in my reality, that man does not love me. Now, this is unconditional love. I love him anyways, regardless. But I have to put a shield up so that his negativity doesn't come back at me. But if I sit and believe me, it's really, really painful because you have a conversation like that, it doesn't leave you right away. For me, this is going to be stuck in my brain for like, oh, a month or two. And it is stressing me out a lot. I look like freaking hell. And you can tell I've been crying. Um, because all of the memories of every hateful, hurtful thing is like stored up in your memory banks like a computer that as soon as you talk to that man the energy level opens up that door and the floodgates of every freaking memory comes out 
And that doesn't happen to me, it happens to everybody else. You may not be aware of it, but that's what this awareness is all about, is be aware of what the hell you're thinking about. That is the biggest shift, is being aware. When you see yourself caught up in a thought that doesn't serve you, um, the goal is, is, to, is to time yourself. Oh, it took me six weeks to notice I was on the wrong path. You know, when you get mad, oh, it took me 24 hours before I realized I was mad. You know, it, oh, then it, I work, you work up to try and realize that you're mad. And then as soon as you recognize you're angry or you're negative or you're in fear or you're feeling depressed, any negative feeling that you're feeling, that's the time that you have to um, work the problem. Why are you experiencing it? Um, what does your problem want of you? For me, I have found that in my soul purpose, I was a very, very curious soul and I wanted to know the answer to everything. Everybody kind of labeled me a know-it-all. So if I didn't know myself, I was labeled one of those kids that just came across like a know-it-all, <laughs> which I'm sure I come across like that now too. Um, but in reality, a know-it-all is just having a life experience that they want to know it all. And they've done a lot of research, so they have a lot to say. So over the years, if you ask that question enough, you find out an awful lot. And I've had to have these hardships that drove me to understand why people at the bottom aren't able to solve any problems. Um, mostly because I was focused on my problems and over the years solving my problem never worked and you can get outside your bubble even more and make some changes but it still didn't work and ultimately I ended up finding out that society had more of an effect on my kids than I did and if I want to break cycles the matrix that we live in right now is holding the cycle together that they're going to experience the same thing you know like they have no choice like there is no free will like it's destined to happen but it doesn't have to be if you become aware of yourself but no human has been aware of themselves i'm only starting to be aware of it and i can't even find anybody that's got that i mean hollow dynamics really opens the door to awareness and awareness of yourself. It's like you people should check that shit out. It can't identify the unknown problem yet because you can't recognize that your problem comes from you. Anything that you experience out in the world is ultimately coming from yourself. So anytime you get mad, that's the time you got to go, oh, I can't be mad at that guy. I got to be mad at myself for some reason. You know, so while I could be really, really pissed off at my father as long as I held myself responsible for why it was going on even though he was the adult and he was the abusive guy I ultimately found out why I wanted this life experience what's the purpose why am I here you know obviously it isn't here for me to suffer it's here for me to overcome and learn something that's the way I figure it you know like for some odd reason, I've had this motivation to survive something. So, obviously, I was meant to survive something. Obviously, you learn something in the process of surviving. Obviously, how we survive and our life rules are how you survive. You could survive with anger or you could survive with love. And if you survive with love, then you get all of the right answers. If you survive with hate and fear and, oh my God, what's going to happen next? You're going to create more and more things to hate your life one way or another. But if you can do it while you're feeling loving and peaceful, and then it just comes to you. And um, so that's what's really helps me. Um, overcome this really really painful experience of just hearing my father's voice and I left you know the message to him that hey do you love me as much as you you would love a car you know um, I don't know what his response is clearly 
uh, in my life purpose, I've also, he, they, everybody's always heard me say I should write a book. So everybody's, uh, you know, and if y'all act like this, and this is my life experience, and y'all want me to work and be productive, then I'm going to write a book. You know, that's what people do. Here's my experience. Here's what I've learned. Here's how I've grown, which means that your experience somehow is going to be entangled in my experiences, which means your stories that you want to keep secret can't possibly be secret if I'm to follow my personal path. And it's not about feeling revengeful. It's I personally believe that somebody in our planet said no I ain't going to keep any secrets and I got to do it for your own good because I kept one hell of a big secret that is like this is this is why you should get along with family now I don't know if this is uh, parts of this are unknown as yet as to what's going on but this has been playing on me and this is the biggest secret because it's the secret that I made to my mother. And um, if everybody had, I mean, this could kill my father, but I've let somebody else know so he should find out about it. Um, but letting it on YouTube might be a little bit painful for him that causes him a heart attack. So I'm hoping everybody would look at this as a loving experience and send my father as much love and understanding for what he's gone through because I really truly do believe he is a loving caring person even though he's the most miserable person on the planet um, don't know what he's like now he's getting pretty old so I'm pretty sure he can't fight so good but um, he's never liked anything he's hated everything which means he has no love for himself in the first place. And you don't tell somebody to just snap out of it. And clearly medication just does not work. Um, my sister, who I've been in contact to, what they do is they try to label me as the one that has the problem. And I take it on. And then I take it on in our social experience, and then here I'm on welfare. So in order for me not to take on their labels and not to affect me, it's really powerful for me to throw it back at them, which has happened with my sister that I'm not going to get too much um, into some of the things that uh, are going on with her. But needless to say, it's another person that's waiting to die. And... Um, but she has been very, very, very depressed for most of her life and um, tried every single friggin' pill, which was, a, again, one of my major motivations in, in all of the research that I've done, um, not only for myself, but I wanted to help my sister out because she was so depressed. She's seen every psychologist, psychiatrist, every single thing that's available out there she has tried so anybody that suffers from depression I was there once I was there enough to see how painful and black that is so nobody can ever tell me I don't know what that feels like because I do it was so painful for me that there's no way in hell no way in hell I'll ever go down that road again um, you have to come out of it to know that you'll never go down that road again and, and so you do have to know the process of getting yourself out of a depression and it definitely is not with a pill um, but I've done an awful lot of research and I can see why everybody's depressed and nobody's telling the truth but we're replaying the same stories over and over again and we simply don't know the answer we don't know how to look at the world um, in a loving manner. We're all depressed, all negative, so every way we view the world is through negative eyes. So when somebody says, just change your mind, it's like, I only got one mind, how do I change it? You know, like you can shake it up, it's still what it is. It's negative, you know, like there's no perspective, there's no comprehension you don't know how to do it nobody knows how to teach you nobody knows how to teach you to have self-confidence 
nobody knows what what it's like to have love when i started doing this i'm gonna have to continue this is a long one peace out